Hello, I'm Lynn from Beyond the Palette. Welcome back to this second video about the story of Patient Griselda. To recap, we talked about the first panel in the last video, it's called Marriage, and Galtieri, the Marquis of Saluzzo, has been entreated by his subjects to marry. He chooses a peasant girl called Griselda and marries her on the condition that she is always to obey him no matter what. So this is the second panel and it's sort of not dissimilar to the first in that we have Griselda and Gaultieri as a, a central couple in the, in the middle of the panel. But once again, the narrative begins over on the left. And there are sort of three, over on the left-hand side, there are three little individual scenes that tell quite a spine-chilling story. Of these three, we need to look to the conversation going on to the right-hand side first. This is Gaultieri in his customary gold chatting to a man in dark robes and he seems to be pointing, gesturing over to the left-hand side of the painting. If we look to the far left, we can see indeed Griselda who is handing over something to a gentleman in a red hat and she's not looking very happy about it. The gentleman in the red hat appears then again as he carries whatever Griselda's given him away somewhere. So what is this bundle that Griselda has given the man in the red hat? Well, after Griselda had given birth to their first child, Gaultieri decided that, you know, maybe she wasn't going to be as loyal to him or wasn't as loyal to him as he would like her to be. No particular reason why he might think this. Um, but he thought that he would test her loyalty and he decided that he was going to test it in quite a big way to say the least. And so what he's done is he has instructed somebody to take away her child. So that bundle is her first child, a baby girl. And Griselda thinks that this baby girl is probably were either going to be murdered or will be is is to be taken away outside of the city and left somewhere which is of course tantamount to to murder um but she acquiesces she then has a another child a little boy and exactly the same thing happens she acquiesces so testing her my goodness there's another um whole kind of a line of inquiry in terms of this story um, as to why on earth Griselda complied. Okay, you know, I know that she is supposed to be the compliant wife and she is essentially the property of the Marquis of Saluzzo, um, Gaultieri, but, uh, but this, is, this is above and beyond, isn't it? So we come to the central panel, but we come to the central panel via perhaps um, a little bit of light relief, certainly I think for, for 21st century audiences, audiences, just look at these courtiers, if that's what you call them, if you're, an, if you're a Marquis. I mean, he has to have the campest court anywhere in Tuscany. I think that this guy in the red tights with his back to us is possibly doing the floss, actually. An early version, a 15th century version of a modern dance. Uh, but now to the central panel. Um, this, the Giltieri and Griselda are in the same positions essentially as they were when they got married. But this is a complete mockery of that because after she's had her two children taken away from her, Gaultieri then says to Griselda, I am very sorry, Griselda, but um, you're not good enough for me. Um, I'm afraid that I don't want to be married to you anymore. I should never have married a, a peasant girl in the first place. I'm divorcing you so you can go. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 
that's the central panel. You can see then Griselda, if we move over to the right hand side, you can see her stripped of Gaultieri's or the, of the robes that Gaultieri has given her, only down to her petticoat this time. She's not naked, uh, which is just about the only upside in this horrible tale. And she is sent back to her father's house. You can see her going back to her father's house to the very far right of the painting. I mentioned when I was talking about the first panel that animals play a really important role in these works. And in fact, as the story becomes darker and darker, their role becomes more and more satirical, um, but could also be viewed perhaps as a little bit of light relief from the, the horrors of the, the story that's going on. So just take a look in the front of this painting at these three animals. We have a bear and a deer and a peahen. But the bear is chained up and has its back to the deer and the peahen and looks for all, its, uh, for all the world as though he's eating a chicken drumstick or something. There's something quite um, human about this, this bear, which is, of course, very strange to say the least because he is the natural predator of both the deer and the peahen but instead what is happening is that it's in fact the deer that is threatening the peahen's egg. This isn't right at all and what I think the artist is doing is using these animals both to satirise and to highlight Gaultieri's appalling behaviour but also what he's saying is is that yeah you know what if you behave like this Gaultieri you can legally because Griselda is essentially your property but if you don't obey the norms of society, then society is going to start to disintegrate and, and the natural order of things is going to be overturned. It's not quite the end of the story. There is a twist in this tale. Um, so join me next time to find out exactly what happens to Griselda and Gaultieri. Bye-bye, see you soon.